is one of the crucial number ones of 1990. Seal is singing live, Adamski playing live on Killer. Hi everyone, my name's Ski Okafor and I'm thrilled to be back here doing another deconstruction. Today we're going to be looking at uh, this amazing track by Adamski featuring Seal called Killer. Let's have a look at a few fun facts. So it was produced by Adamski, vocals by Seal and written by the two of them. It started out as an instrumental as part of uh, Adamski's live set. Came out 28 years ago on March the 21st, 1990 came on MCA, major label, and it's from his album Dr. Dr. Adamski's Musical Pharmacy, um, recorded at MCA Studios, and style-wise, it's kind of a mix, really. So it came out of the acid house scene. Uh, Adamski was doing lots of raves at the time, but it's got a real soulful vibe to it, obviously very dancey, quite bluesy as well. And if there's one production feature or composition feature, it's the bass line. Everyone knows the bass line. Got a picture here of Adamski back in the day when he was doing those raves. And what's amazing is that he was going out performing these huge sets, big raves, big fields, just with two or three main pieces of equipment. Um, had the TR909 drum machine, legendary house drum machine, the Ensonic SQ80 synthesizer, and also he had a Casio FZ10M sampler as well. Let's just have a look at those bits of equipment. There's the TR909 there, beautiful piece of equipment. And then, yeah, this SQ80. This is a cross wave synth, so it's kind of got a combination of like wavetable and some samples, but it's got analog filters and envelopes as well, so it sounds gorgeous. And then also he had an RX120 drum machine on this particular track, um, so we'll better hear those sounds in a bit. And just finally, yeah, here's the uh, Casio FZ10M sampler that he used to use. Okay, so for the deconstruction, I'm going to be using uh, Ableton. I've got Live 10.1 suite here, and it's the beta. And also, I've got Push 2. I've got a keyboard as well. So we're going to start putting the uh, elements of the track together. So uh, we're going to start off with the 909 kit. This is just the standard Ableton 909 kit that comes with uh, Live Suite. Here are the sounds. So we're just going to start off with the kick drum. So this is the very standard four on the floor. There we go, and I'm going to duplicate that down to the next scene, and then down again. So I'm going to play the third scene now, and we're just going to add some extra kick drums in there. And then we're going to go, going to, go to the clap, just add that in. And I've got a rim shot here as well, I'm going to put that in now as well, play that in live. Okay, so we've got that part. I'm going to duplicate that one down again, and we're going to add some hi-hat now. There we go. And now I'm going to duplicate the third one down, this one, without the hi-hat, and it's a slightly different hi-hat pattern here. Um, and I'm also going to delete that rim shot as well. Worth noting that I've got uh, quantize on, so putting everything in time for me. So that's just the first five clips. Um, actually, as the tune progresses, um, there are a lot more clips. So um, I've actually prepared all these rather than uh, playing them all through now. So I'm just going to actually drag those on there and we can have a play through. So the first five are the same, that's the one I've just put in. Just have a quick listen through to the next ones. So the clap gets a little bit more intense there. A bit more open hi-hat. Then back to that first one. So you can see it kind of progresses through the tune. Great, so that's the 909 uh, taken care of. Now, the next sound is the bass line. So, um, hang on a minute, is that someone at the door? Hello. Hi Adam. Hi. Thanks so much for coming over to East London. You're welcome. We're surrounded by some amazing vintage gear. So, just wanted to talk about the legendary track Killer. Can you give us some insight into exactly how it came about? Well, um, in the summer of 89, I was playing in Ibiza a lot 
in Amnesia. And I was also playing a lot of those big seminal raves like Sunrise and Biology and Energy. I think I debuted it at the closing party of Amnesia in 89. I mean, and it was an instrumental. Yeah. I was playing instrumental music. And then I met this guy, Seal. Yeah, he'd, he'd actually given his demo cassette to my MC, Daddy Chester, mm. who was also my flatmate. Yeah. And um, Daddy Chester came home gushing about this singer he'd met and checked his voice out. And then, then Seal and I used to frequent the same club uh, called Solaris, mm. which was my favourite club in London on a Sunday evening. And I just said, yeah, come down the studio. I'm, I'm recording some demos and come and just come and sing on yeah. one if you want. And it was all the spirit of the times, you know, I was just bumping into all these characters and creative people around the scene. And, you know, it was just like, yeah, great. Let's try and do something. And, um, I remember making that track and it, it, in, it, I, it, I think it took about 15 minutes to programme the music. How did you kind of work on the arrangement of the vocal? Did you kind of work on the instrumental? Did you sort of do a lot of arrangement around the vocal? Because there's quite a lot of dynamics, you know, like really builds and suddenly drops, that kind of thing. Well, it was work? very simple and minimal because I was into instrumental techno predominantly. I mean, I'm sort of into everything, but mm. at the time, it, there was no uh, choruses because for me it was enough. I got enough from the music, just the string pad and the twinkly bells coming in. For me, that was the chorus. Mm. But the A and R man at the record company, Paul Doggett, who sadly passed away, suggested um, not suggested. He said, "Look, you know, you've got to put a chorus on it." So Seal went away with Guy Sigsworth and came up with that solitary brother line ah. and said, you know, here's a hook and stuck yeah. it on. I was going to ask you about, about the equipment you were using mm. actually at the time. So we've actually got here TR909 mm. um, and the Insonic SQ80. The piano sound on the SQ80 is just so distinctive, yeah, isn't it? You it's a can't... preset and it's yeah. the same preset I used on NRG yeah. and on Killer. You, you know, it's just, a, yeah. I love that piano sound. It's a brilliant it's sound, of, yeah. It's sort of fake but real, but sort yeah. of... So as far as like programming sounds, uh, so some of the sounds on Killer are the kind of the presets and some of them you, you program yourself, right? Mm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the strings are preset, the pianos are preset, that twinkly bell is a preset. Yeah. The bass and the other thing were made, but I'd just sit there, you know, probably stoned and just, you know, for hours just turning things up and down and fiddling around until And then things pressing save and then yeah. you had your preset. Yeah. yeah, you could name a sound and put it in here. I'm not a very good player and I'm, I just, I just like messing around and, yeah. and I... Well, I just, that, you know, two finger bass line, yeah. you know, I, I can't remember how or why, you know, came to me but yeah the, the all that stuff that's the same notes as the bass line right okay um but just on a sound that's kind yeah, of yeah we changed the, the, the sound was like it was the preset bell sound that's on there mm. and then just me messing with all these things yeah <laughs> <laughs> envelopes and lfos and oscillators unfriendly and, buttons yeah, yeah and then i used to transpose things like way off either end because mm. it would end up picking up notes from four octaves up that That's way so and four octaves down that way and yeah. in the, the oddness of the sounds and yeah and it was all just experimentation based on my limited playing ability and my hunger for that sort of music well look, thanks so much for coming in brilliant Brilliant Thanks. to hear an insight into a legendary track in your career as well. And uh, yeah, come back, please. Mm. Now, the next sound is the bass sound. Okay, so this is from the SQ80. In fact, all the sounds from Killer are using the SQ80. So let's just uh, have a look to see what I use for that. So I was searching around 
to see if I could find some kind of recreation, like a soft synth version. And uh, the only one I could find was this one, it's called the SQ8L. This was actually made uh, a long time ago. It says here 1997, I'm not sure if I believe that, but it's actually only for PC. So I thought, oh, I'm using a Mac, that's a real shame, you know, I can't use it. But I did a little bit more fishing around and I actually found this uh, application called NetVST. And this is like a wrapper. It actually allows you to run PC VSTs uh, on a Mac. Uh, and it actually runs over a network, which is why it's called NetSynth. Slightly tricky to set up, but it actually works really well. And it means that you can actually run multiple instances of this SQ8L in your door, which is brilliant. So that's what I use uh, for this. And um, what I've done is uh, I actually found kind of the appropriate sounds um, and then I actually sampled them so I didn't have to kind of keep setting up every time. So this is actually um, a multi-sample patch. Again, I found a new, discovered a new technique, something within Apple main stage, this thing called auto sampler, which is fantastic. Um, it saves you the time of having to record every single note. You can, you can actually uh, set the kind of the, the range of notes that you want to sample. It puts it into an EXS24 sampler instrument, which you can then load into Ableton Sampler, which is great. So there's that. Let's now look at a little bit of the theory behind the track. So this track is in B flat minor, and I'm gonna play that to you now. Um, that's got five flats. We've got B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, and then back to B flat. Uh, and the bass line goes like this. Um, if we go to push now, uh, if you're familiar with push, uh, you know it's got a scale feature. Um, so if I put the scale feature on there, I've actually got this set to B flat minor. So that means that the tonic or the main Note the B flat is represented here um, with the green pads. And I can only actually play those notes. So I'm going to put this bass line in actually on push now. So here we go. Okay. And this bass line goes throughout the entire track. So I'm just going to duplicate this down to all the different scenes. Now, uh, earlier on I mentioned uh, this drum machine, the Yamaha RX120. Uh, let's just have another little look at that. So, the story goes with this, is that Adamski actually had this set up um, connected to his SQ80 via MIDI, um, and it actually mapped to the bass lines, the bass line notes that he was playing. So, I've actually tried to kind of recreate that effect. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same sounds. Um, but you'll hear the effect that it actually has on the bass line. Um, so I'm going to put that in now. Here we go. Solo that now. It sounds pretty thin on its own, but if I add in the bass line and then everything in. Cool. So again, I'm going to duplicate that down to the whole track. Nice. Okay. So we're getting there. Okay, next sound. Now this is another sound from the SQ80. Uh, I've called it the kind of clav sound. I'm not sure exactly kind of uh, what the preset was. Um, but for this, I'm actually using Ableton's Wavetable synth. And in 10.1, um, you may have watched one of our previous videos, uh, DJ Ravine made, um, but you can actually now drag in your own wavetables. So I thought, brilliant. Okay, this is a chance to try out that feature. So uh, what I actually found 
was the original wavetables for the SQ80. So I did a, I did a Google and uh, looked for it. And here, here it is. I found a page linked to them um, and downloaded it. And it's actually it produced a folder with all the wavetables. So I was actually able to drag those in. So check that out if you want to try that for yourself. Um, they're all available. So, OK, so what's interesting about this sound um, is it's got a delay on it and actually in the track the delay is like not entirely synced to the track and that's actually a real beauty uh, of the part. So what I'm going to do is try to recreate that. I'm just going to put the part in without the delay at the moment and then we'll use some automation to put that in. So here we go. Okay, so it's in. I'm going to solo that for the moment. Okay, so I'm going to uh, select the uh, echo here. This is actually uh, the send on B. Um, and let's just have a look at that. There we go. It's going to the echo device. Uh, and if I just play that on its own. Um, so actually what I want that, that uh, I want to put in some automation so that it just sends on the second note each time. So I'm going to put that in. It's going to draw that in. Let's just select that there. There we go. And I'm just going to drag it up. There we go. On there. And then on this one as well. Whoops. Put that back down again. Bit messy. Never mind. Here we go. So, so you can see it's just sending on that second note. Let's play that in the context of the track. Cool, so that's that part. Um, let's just add that into the arrangement now. So let's just duplicate that down. There we go. Okay, so that's in the right places. So the next sound uh, is a string sound. And this is one of the presets from the SQ80. Another beautiful sound. So let me just quickly show you on the keyboard what's happening there and the chords. So. You can see there, this is the string chords. We've got B flat minor. These are all triads, and that's the one chord. Then we have G flat major. That's the sixth chord. And then F minor, that's the five chord. So just those three chords. Really beautiful. It really kind of gives it, you know, a lot of emotion. So I'm going to put those in again on push. Duplicate that down now as well. Great, now we've got uh, my favourite part of the track, uh, which is this kind of ravey piano sound um, that really kind of picks it up towards the end. Uh, so let's find out where that happens. That actually, actually happens in this section here. You can see I'm sort of putting this all together like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, it will all make sense very soon. So the piano chords, uh, the first chord is the same uh, as the first string chord. We've got B flat minor and then G flat major, but it's the first inversion. So that's the root version, that's the first inversion. And then F minor, again that's the first inversion of F minor. And then A flat again. And that piano is so distinctive, it was used in so many kind of rave tracks of the time. Um, so I can actually put this uh, on push again. So let's, let's go for it. Okay, so a um, couple more sounds to go. This next one is this bell sound. Um, so let's just lose that. Now for this, I used uh, Ableton's operator. Got quite a kind of FM belly sound. And it's going through the 
echo delay as well. And again, a bit like that kind of clav sound, it's just a little bit kind of uh, out of time, works really well. So I'm gonna put that in, um, the first, first time it comes in, um, it doesn't come in straight away, it comes in the second half of the clip. So let's just put that in. Cool. And then it comes again, just uh, with the piano. So let's just put that in straight away. Nice, I'm just gonna duplicate, duplicate that down there. Right, so there's one more part to put in, uh, and this is actually uh, a little sample of the vocal. Um, and I'm gonna play that to you now. And uh, for that, I'm just, just gonna duplicate uh, this part here, just so I can show you what I did. Um, so actually, if we play that, that's actually a, um, a vocal sample and I will reveal where that comes from in a minute. Um, but let's put that in, let's put that part in. So, that is um, pretty much all the musical parts. There's one extra part which I didn't put in, which is just kind of a real squiggly synth um, that was just a little bit hard to recreate. Um, I'm still working on that one. So as is uh, traditional with these deconstructions, it's always great to kind of finish it off uh, with the vocal. Um, didn't manage to get hold of the acapella of this, but I invited my good friend uh, Valerie Etienne uh, to come and sing it. So um, let's just watch a little clip of her uh, in the studio on 15th of February, uh, just singing the clip. Here we go. Yes, Valerie Etienne, a little round of applause. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, I've um, put this recording into some clips, so I'm just going to drag this over now. Um, and before I play through the whole track, um, let's just have a little listen to how the vocal sounds. Solitary brother. So Is it still I've got this sending to uh, a delay. Um, that's just the uh, Ableton Echo. Um, and I'm also using this lovely plugin here, which is the Sound Toys little plate. Sounds beautiful. Solitary brother. Sorry to recommend that one. Is it still a part of Cool. So I think we should now uh, have a play through the whole track um, until the end. Here is Adamski's Killer featuring Valerie Etienne. First verse coming up here. So you want to be free to live your life the way you want to be. Will you give if we cry? Will we? 
future kings and only need to know good And besides, all our sons and daughters already know how that feels There you go, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that deconstruction of Adamski's Killer. Um, it was great to do and I really enjoyed the kind of the research process and trying to kind of overcome um, some of the problems with finding sounds and sampling and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, really, really enjoyable. So um, thanks for checking it out and I'll catch you again very soon.